Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about hot tub electrics and exactly what you need. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so hot tub electrics. In this video, I'm gonna cover everything that you need to know about preparing the electrics for your hot tub. Now this is applicable whether it's a shop bought plastic shell tub or whether you're building your own DIY hot tub, you're still gonna need some form of electrics into it to, to actually make it work. So in this video, I'll cover the step-by-step -step, kind of what you need to look for. Now, before I go any further, electrics can be fatal. It's not a laughing matter. It's not something that you should mess with if you're uncertain. And of course, I definitely advise getting a qualified electrician in to fit the electrics that you're gonna need for your DIY hot tub. Now, this video is to enable you to tell your electrician exactly what you're looking for if they're not familiar with hot tubs. So this isn't designed so that you can go and do it yourself. I don't recommend this at all. So please get a qualified electrician in to lay the cabling and fit the electrics ready, whether you're doing a DIY hot tub or whether it's a plastic shell tub. Okay, so let's get going with the video. Now, the first thing is that the electrical code or regulations, it really varies from state to state, from country to country. So you must look up and research what the exact requirements are for your particular area. Just because you know, it's one thing for one person, it doesn't mean it's gonna be the same You know, if they're uh, a, a few states over. It does vary country to country, state to state, so you must check the local regulations for installing the electrics for your DIY hot tub, or indeed your plastic shell tub. You most definitely should ask for a rotary breaker. Now, this is a rotary breaker, and this will enable you to completely isolate and shut down your hot tub and all the kit in the event of a, a problem, or it can be quite useful to shut everything down if you're doing some kind of service on the tub as well. Now, again, the regulations for where this should be located are gonna change depending on your location, so do check that out, but you should definitely be asking for a rotary breaker to be put into the electrical supply for your hot tub. Now, before we go any further, always a great opportunity in the video to say, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions. Hit that notification icon to be notified when my videos go live. I put two videos out in long form like this every single week and a whole bunch of shorts as well. So loads of information for DIY hot tubs, hot tubs in general, plunge pools. That's exactly what I cover on this channel. So please do give me a like, do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification icon too. Okay, so what about the voltage requirements for your hot tub? Now, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in the States, it's very similar. You're gonna want 230 or 240 volts. Now, whether that's 50 or 60 Hertz, it doesn't really matter. It's the voltage that is important. Now, you may be thinking, well, hold on, I've only got 110 or 115 volts into my home. The, Reality is you will have a split system in the USA that enables your electrician to hook you up with 230 volts. The chances are you've got some domestic appliances that do that already, things like some washing machines or some tumble dryers, really devices that are gonna draw a lot of current for safety the voltage is doubled so that the current draw is less. Now, if we look at electrics in the most basic form, now I'm not an electrician, I don't claim to be. However, I do know that it's not the voltage that is dangerous, it is the amount of current. So the reason for hot tubs that we need the 230 or the 240 volts is so that we can keep that current as low as possible. So it is the amount of current that's dangerous, not the amount of voltage. So speak to your electrician, they will be able to tell you how easy it is to, to hook up your L1 and your L2s on your split system to give you that 230 volts, but you will not want to be putting in 110 volts just because the maximum in terms of electrical heat you're gonna be able to get is a one and a bit kilowatts, which isn't gonna heat up very quickly. And you're also not gonna be able to use your pump 
and your heater at the same time if you're in the US. And that's the same over in Europe. If you're looking at a 13 amp plug and play system, you're not gonna be able to run the heater and the jets at the same time. That's one of the downsides to those systems. So you really do wanna get that up on a, on a 40 amp breaker so that you're able to run both at the same time. And most of those plastic shell tubs will have the option of either a 16 or a 32 amp system. How many amps do you need? Well, this really depends on what you're putting in. So if you're buying a plastic shell tub from the store, you'll have the specifications. The store will be able to tell you exactly what you need in terms of electric, and you can then convey that to your electrician. If you are building it yourself, what do you do? Well, you need to add all of the different amount of amps that you're gonna need to give you a total number that you can tell your electrician. So for example, a five and a half kilowatt spa pack will pull something in the region of 28 amps. You then look at your jet pump. What's that gonna draw when it's on full? We're looking at about 11 to 13, depending on the model. Have you got a blower that's gonna be between three and five? So you need to look at the specification on all of these different pieces of kit, add them all together, and that will give you the total amount of amps that you need to ask your electrician to put in place for you. Now, the amount of amps that you need is gonna determine the thickness of the cable that you're gonna have to run. So different cables are rated for different amounts of amps. So a larger amount of amp is gonna need a thicker cable. If you don't, you're gonna end up really hot wires, it can be very dangerous. So again, this is why you're gonna tell your electrician what you need for your kit. They will advise you on the right gauge of cable that they're gonna run. Now, if you are running cable down your backyard or back garden, I would definitely recommend that it's armored cable. Again, even if you're burying it and check your codes because different codes have different depths that the cable needs to be buried. If you're burying it, if you're pegging it to a wall, again, I'd still go with that armored cable just in case, you know, if you've got kids with their toys that can bang into, you don't want any chances of electrocution. So definitely go for armored cable, whether it's underground, whether it's being pegged to a wall, safety first as always. Now a top tip, when you're getting your electrician to put the electrics in place, have them place a outdoor socket in there for you as well. So whether that's 110 volts in the US or whether it's a 240 volt socket in Europe, have them put that in. It's really useful. It's useful for if you're using a submersible pump to empty your hot tub again, whether that's purchased shell tub or whether you're building your own, you know, being able to plug in a submersible pump for emptying and servicing is, is really helpful. And secondly, if you're building your own and you're adding an LED light, the LED light will run off a regular socket. So in the US, it will run off a regular 110, 115 volt feed. Over in Europe, a regular 240, 230, 240. So have a outdoor socket put in place next to the hot tub electrics in your control room so that you've got something to plug in lights, pumps, vacuum cleaners, all very helpful for servicing your hot tub. So just a little bonus tip for you there, having that additional socket will be very, very useful. So I hope you found this video useful. I'll finish with please, please, please do consult an electrician to put this in place for you. Whether you're building, whether you're buying, I can't stress that enough. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.